evening. We're here with Coach's Corner. I'm your host, uh, Brent Blunt, Coach Jeff Hanger of the Wildcats. Coach, uh, we got off to another big win. Uh, hostile environment for the team, 43-6 over Valdosta. I know you got to be proud about that. Well, I am. Uh, you know, I told our kids yesterday, uh, when I started coaching high school football, uh, which has been a while back, but, you know, Valdosta was the the number one team in the country. Everybody knew about them, their tradition, and, and that is carried on. And, and they do such a good job with their program, and you know, everything about it's first class. And any time you can go there and win, uh, it makes it even more special. You know, I've, I've certainly been there and lost. You know, back in my earlier career, and uh, you know, it's a tough place to play. It's a great environment, great stadium, so much history and tradition. Uh, you know, it was an honor getting to play there, and then you know. Playing like we did uh, it certainly helped things out too. Sure, I know uh, it, it had to kind of settle the nerves and get the crowd in when JJ took the, the opening kickoff back there and got the, got you know got seven points on the board that had to get the kids fired up. Well, I think you know we were ready to play either way. Uh, you know, we, everybody was excited and ready to go. But you know, when that happened, there's no question. You know, it was like uh, grabbing a live wire there on the sideline. In fact, uh, uh, our our young kicker, I, I had to calm him down. He went out there and missed the extra point. He was so excited. You know, everybody was so jacked up. But you know, it was a huge play. Uh, and you know, JJ's done that before. And sure. you know, when, when it kicked to him, uh, when Coach Park turned to me, and when the ball didn't go in the end zone, he said they messed up. And uh, you know, he just he was waiting for a moment to do something special, and he certainly did. I tell you, he uh, he definitely seems to have that just ability to make those plays on those you know kickoffs and punts and things. Just that vision to be able to see that, so it's awesome. Uh, JJ plays better in the big games. There's no question. The bigger the game, the better he's going to play. And uh, you know we're trying to work on that with him a little bit. But uh, you know certainly when when the, when the lights come on and, and it's for real, uh, he, he knows what to do. Talk about you know some of the things that came out of the game that you you were happy with. You know some of the you know the highlights and the positive things you took from it. Well, we played with a great deal of emotion and, and a great deal of intensity. And, uh, you know, we did not against Beach two weeks before, you know, and, and so that was a good sign. And, you know, to see the level of our kids, uh, you know, when they play like that, the level of play go up. We were very physical. We were fast. We, we looked physical. We looked fast. We ran the ball well. Uh, we were, you know, we, we were excited. We played very upbeat. Now on the flip side, and, and I told the kids this yesterday, uh, we had 113 plays in the game, offense, defense, and special teams. There's 113 plays. Well, of those 113 plays, we had 207 zeros in our assignments. So, you know, we, we did not play well. We played hard, uh, and, but we did not play well. And, uh, you know, our goal for now is to try to put those two together because if we can play smarter uh, assignment, do our assignments better and all those things and go along with that emotion and intensity, we could be a very good football team. You now when you said you had the zeros, what, what exactly does that mean? That they just didn't perform the play or you know, whatever? Yeah, you know, if you're an offensive lineman, for instance, and uh, you block the wrong guy, you right. know, or step the wrong way, you know, that's a zero. If you're on defense and you line up wrong or you miss a tackle, that's a zero. You know, special teams, uh, you don't do what you're supposed to. So when we added up all of our zeros from all our positions, we had 207, which is quite a few more than we had against Beach. Sure. But anybody that saw those two games would tell you we played a lot better against right. Valdosta. Uh, you know, we did, but that was because of our emotion and our energy. What we've got to do is have that emotion and energy and eliminate those mistakes. So fundamentally, if we you know, just try to keep getting better each week and you know, getting more proficient at what we're doing, I think in that game uh, at Valdosta, and, and we talked about it at halftime, we have a bunch of kids that had never been in that situation before. You know, young kids that hadn't played, uh, uh, you know, kids that are new to our program, things like that. And, and you put them in that situation, they're going to make more mistakes. Sure. But hopefully now that they've been through it once, the next time they'll react better to it. Well, it's hard to think that there's going to be a bigger environment than something like that, so that you know, definitely should get them that experience. Well, uh, th there's there's definitely going to be a bigger environment. There's two waiting on us at the end of the season. That'll be a probably more hostile environment, uh, you know, uh, with our next two road trips. But you know, that was certainly a good test for us. Um, and one of the you know positives came out of the game. Um, you know, Bryce Ramsey set the school record for most touchdown passes. Thrown that, you know, I know he's got to be excited about that. And 
um, you know, have his name in the in the record book that you know people can come back and see down the line. Well, he's certainly deserving of it. He uh, he kind of did it in spite of us, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, most, most places where Bryce would have gone to school, he would have probably set that record in one year, you know. But, uh, you know, with us and, and our run-oriented offense made it more hard, more difficult for him. Uh, you know, but uh, Bryce is, is number one stat, and, and what he is concerned with and what we're concerned with has always been just winning. And, uh, you know, we're happy for him. I hope he breaks every passing record we've ever had. He deserves it. Uh, you know, but at the same time, the most important record for him is to finish 15-0. and 0. Sure. Looking ahead to next week, uh, we've got Coffee County. Um, talk to us a little bit about Coffee, what we can expect. Well, it's going to be a very physical game. Uh, that's my opinion going in. Coffee, we have always said that Coffee physically looks better than any team in this region. Uh, you know, and over the years, even when we weren't in it, we'd get film and we'd see that. Well, now, you know, they've got a coach that believes in that brand of football. Uh, coach Pruitt coached at Fitzgerald several year, for several years. Coach down in Florida at a private school down there and won like eight or nine state championships. He knows what he's doing. He's running the wing tee. They're very physical on offense and defensively. They run around and, and hit you. And uh, you know they've got a good team. They're four and one. They lost to Burke County, who's a defending state champions from last year uh, in 4A, I guess. So you know they, and, and they, they had a chance to win that game. So uh, I think they're an extremely good football team right now. And, uh, you know, the only thing that I think we got going for us is that he hasn't been there longer, you know, and then they're still going through a few growing pains. Uh, but, you know, if we relax, if we think we've done something, you know, already, then, then we could be in for a long night. And, uh, you know, as a coaching staff, we're very concerned because we can see on film what kind of team they got. Their, their offensive line is huge. Uh, they average probably about 320. They are athletic. And uh, they've got a good football team. They really do. They, they may be as talented a team as we're going to see the rest of the year. How, you know, we run the wing tee obviously here, and they run the wing tee. From a defensive standpoint, our coaches, does it help us at all being that we run that in, in, in the scout team? You know, we, you know, I would think obviously with us running wing <laughs> tee, we, we'd be prepared and we would know yeah. kind of. You know, that, that's kind of a a myth really you know I think uh, people you know and I used to think that too but you know the truth of it is that you get to this point in the season once you get past spring practice and maybe the first two weeks of summer camp you don't go against each other very much you know we're always preparing for somebody else so you know our scout teams right now are probably better running spread stuff than they are the wing tee and uh, yesterday it showed and, and you know coffee doesn't run it exactly like us and so when that happens, your kids are going to still freak out. And we did not do a good job uh, yesterday running the scout team, and we've got to get better at that. But, you know, at least we understand, I guess, what they're doing. Uh, but still, you know, we don't have the linemen to simulate how they do it how with they those, those kids they've got. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't think that's an advantage for either one of us because our, our offenses are a little different in what we do. But, you know, we'll see. And, and like I said, we haven't been practicing against the wing team. We've been practicing against everybody we're getting ready to play. Well, this game should have everybody fired up, 7.30, Friday night. Uh, we should have a packed house. They should be bringing a lot of people over, I would expect. So. They are. Uh, you know, they, we, our region rule now, our new region rule says we got to give them 1,000 tickets up front. If they sell those, we have to give them more. And uh, he's expecting to sell those out. They're expecting to bring a huge crowd, and, and hopefully our fans will come out too. It, you know, they're uh, we're tied with them. Us, them, and Lowndes are all one and zero in the region right now. So, you know, in essence, we're playing for the region championship possibility this Friday night. Well, that ought to be enough motivation for the fans to not only come out but get there early and get in their seats. And you know, expecting that big of a crowd, and uh, you know. It always helps to have that, you know, that uh, extra person in the stands getting them fired up. Absolutely. Well, well, we look forward to, you know, the game Friday, and hopefully everybody come out and coach. Hopefully next week we'll be talking about another big win. We hope so. Thank you. Have a great evening.